Hello, everyone. This is Rick with the Cyber Pro Podcast, where industry leaders share their insights. It's five questions in about nine minutes because hackers never sleep. Joe, why don't you jump in, give us the, the reminder of who you are, what you do, and of course, give us that, that, first, uh, that first little narrative you got to tell us all about. All right. So my name is Joe Lewis. I am the Director of Cyber Assessment Strategy for the U.S. Department of Energy. Um, and my spiel is that uh, my uh, opinions are certainly my own and do not represent those of my federal agency. Perfect. Perfect. How long have you been in the federal space? I know that you're, you're a former Marine, so you, know, you can add that if you want. So yeah, I've got about, uh, including my time in the military, about 19 years of federal time under my belt. You ever going to go to the dark side and come over to the commercial? It's a really attractive uh, kind of lingering thought out there, right? Because uh, of course the, the the money's out there and I'm young. And so there's plenty of time to come back to federal service if I want to. But uh, I, truth be told, I'm a career federal servant at this point. I've got you know almost 20 years and uh, I'm, I'm doing a second master's in public service and administration because I feel so strongly about being an agent of change from the inside. That's awesome. I love it. So let's jump into the second question, even though that was like the fourth or fifth. But the second question that we normally ask is, why do you love being a cyber professional? Well, so I, I love being a cyber professional because um, it's a constantly evolving landscape. There's always something new to learn. Uh, so you don't get complacent. And I think that, you know, I don't know if it's my internal neuroticies or what it is, but I, I, I tend to get bored very, very easily. And so working in a dynamic environment is definitely something that, that I crave. And so um, the other thing I really like about working in cyber is that it really is a field for everybody. Um, I've seen entry vectors from auditing. I've seen entry vectors from IT and, and they're, they're, it just has this broad uh, kind of a, appeal to it. That, uh, that really brings all people from all walks of life to it. I, I can't agree more. I, I actually just recently helped somebody get a position. She, she came from being an army MP and never used a computer other than her car computer. So it's everywhere. Everybody comes into cyber at some point, which is cool. Absolutely. Cybersecurity is the top concern, right? That is the buzz statement of the last few years, but what does that mean to you? Well, it means to me that the conversation is finally shifting in the right direction. Um, I think for many, many years, uh, security, and of course, as an industry, we didn't do ourselves any favors, but I feel like security was seen as um, inhibitors to to business and, and trying to put up controls for the sake of putting up controls. And I think this um, shift away from compliance-driven cybersecurity into a more risk-informed type of, of uh, environment has led the way for us to be seen as business enablers, right? And mitigators of risk. And so um, this to me just means that we're finally a part of the conversation in a meaningful and constructive way. And I think that that uh, is truly indicative of the evolution of our industry. You, you made a statement there about risk-informed. I'm curious, just expound upon that. What, what do you see as a risk-informed step? Well, so, you know, making decisions um, about what types of controls we put in place uh, based entirely on their risk posture. And I think that that's a really important uh, point. Um, it used to be that we would patch things for the sake of patching things. And, and we would do these controls, these technical controls uh, in particular, because we thought they were good hygiene. But when you make a risk informed decision, you say, well, um, I may allow this Windows XP box to, to remain that's driving an industrial control system because it's on a closed restricted network because the vendor doesn't exist, because I can put a WAF in front of it, right? So you can apply these other compensating and mitigating controls in place. And then you can say, well, it's okay that I have not yet updated this thing to Windows 7, because if I do, I'm going to break this key and critical component of an industrial control system. Sure, it's not a Windows 95. I'm kidding. <laughs> it probably is. It, re it might actually be. Some of these are pre pretty old. I've seen some aggressively old stuff sitting out in some of the infrastructures and they're just off grid and they just do their job. So you're right, you know, risk is important, but understanding if you need to you need to spend money to adverse risk if there's no risk is, is actually really impressive. So thank you for that. What information or insight does Joe want to share with our cyber community? Well, so I think a lot of people focus on technical acumen when they work in cyber. I think it the, as an industry, it logically draws people from technical backgrounds. And so um, my my one piece of advice to anybody that is uh, considering or is already working in this field is uh, don't lose sight of the soft skills, 
right? We need to learn to be effective communicators and we need to uh, be empathetic listeners and, um, you know, don't overly rely on those technical acumen alone. Because I feel like, um, you know, as our industry matures, we're now finally at the table. We're able to, uh, you know, CISOs are now uh, increasingly no longer reporting to their CIOs, their partners and peers to the CIO and their, their C-suite executives. And that is really indicative of this maturation of our process. But we need good people to fill those roles. And those roles require the ability to communicate the, the, the softer side of leadership and management and, and all of those other things. So um, I feel like, you know, that's that's one thing, you know, I, I'm actually starting a PhD in cybersecurity leadership. And one of the areas in which I really want to focus my research is how do we identify people that have those soft skills early and then support them through their career so that way they can be those next generation cybersecurity leaders. Awesome. I love it. We'll talk more about the PhD, but let's get to the fun question. Favorite piece of retro technology that makes you smile. So it's funny. I, I thought a lot about this because there are a number, but you know, I, I used to be a plant manager for what was ostensibly just a giant laundry. Okay, we were a uniform rental company, and uh, I mean, one of the largest companies in the in the country that you would never know unless you had a, a a reason to use their services. And as part of my training and learning that industry, I came across an old five hundred pound washer that had a metal drum, and you would actually punch a card in order to feed it, and it had metal contacts. And so that's how it got the programming for what it was watching. You'd have to put in the right card and then it would turn the drum. And it was it was amazing. Um, but it was it is the most retro piece of technology I could think of that when you when you think about this big, huge, you know, 500 pound washer that's washing, you know, uh, 500 pounds of jeans. Uh, but then you get to feed it a programming card with holes in it uh, was it just it, it cracks me up every time I think about it. Awesome. Thank you so much for being on the Cyber Pro podcast. All right. Thank you very much for having me. You did it. You made it to the end. Check us out for future podcasts and more content.